I'd like to introduce you to one of my patients. This is Victoria. She's 24 years old. She's from Nigeria. She's uh, 32 weeks pregnant, and she has HIV infection. I've been treating her with antiretrovirals, and she's been doing really well. Her uh, HIV viral load is now undetectable, thereby reducing her rate of transmission from almost 50% down to less than 1%. She's had no major side effects on therapy, and I've been really pleased with uh, the progress. Her baby's been growing well, and she seemed very happy as well. She recently came back for a follow-up visit, and she told me she had stopped taking all of her HIV medications. I was pretty shocked. I said, well, why did you do that? And she said that she had read an article on the internet saying that medications in pregnant women can cause problems for the baby, and so she thought that wasn't healthy being on these medications, so she decided to stop. And I told her, well, that's for non-HIV positive, uh, non -HIV positive uh, pregnant women, not in your particular case. So unfortunately, she made a decision that uh, may cost the, uh, the HIV status of her young child. And uh, it's sad, but that's what she did. And she misunderstood the information that she found uh, on the internet. So how many of you have actually searched the internet? You've had some symptoms. You've gone online only to diagnose yourself with some horrible disease, you know, and get, get nervous about. It's very common. And in fact, online medical searches are the second most common search that we do online, just underneath online shopping, actually. 80% of you go online to look up healthcare information, and it's a very common thing. Many of these things that, uh, that we look up um, are useful, but they can also be a two-edged sword. You can look up and find something that doesn't pertain to you, just like my patient, misinformation, and then you may make a decision that is not in your best interest. So one of the reasons why we spend so much time looking up information is because Americans have a lot of chronic medical problems. 60% of Americans actually have one chronic medical condition, and 42% of Americans actually have two or more chronic medical conditions. A chronic medical condition is actually having to go to a doctor be monitored for a year and receive therapy. So that's what's the definition of a chronic medical condition. So if you can imagine two or more, that's quite serious. Many of these are actually lifestyle conditions, things like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart and lung disease, things that we can actually do something about, and that's why people are spending so much time looking on the internet about these. Medicine has a very significant uh, principal agent issue. The agent is the physician, somebody who's highly educated, highly trained, a lot of skills. The patient is usually someone who's sick, hurting, in need, and there's a quite a bit of imbalance between the two people. Not long ago, healthcare information for a patient was not available to the patient. It remained with the doctor, and the patient actually also had no way of looking up healthcare information on their own. The internet and technology has brought about a democratization of healthcare information. People can access information now anytime, any place, on any device. But you should also know that somebody can put out information anytime, anywhere, on any device. Whether that information is true or not, whether it's misinformation or outright lies. And you need to be able to determine, how do I determine the difference? Take a look at this busy slide. Multiple sources of healthcare information. You can look to any of these places and find information about healthcare. We are bombarded by this on a daily basis. It's information overload. All of these sites can actually influence whether you decide to seek medical treatment or not. Go to the doctor or stay home. Vaccinate your child or take the risk of having that child get a serious medical illness actually even starting a fad diet, the keto diet, right? I mean, all of these sites will tell you whether something's right or wrong for you. Many of these sites are actually supported by advertising, even lobbying groups. So that can create a lot of bias, conflicts of interest. So how do you know whether what you're accessing is actually true or not? How do you make that decision? Where you get your healthcare information really matters. It really does. 
I say that you should look to well-known and prestigious institutions, first trying government sites, such as the National Institutes of Health or the Centers for Disease Control. You can look to leading universities and academic medical centers as well for information on studies and up-to-date medical information. And then prestigious institutions like the American Diabetes Association, American Heart Association, also put out information for the patient consumer. And when this information changes or guidelines need to be updated, you can go to any of these places and find out what those are. This ensures that you're getting the best and uh, most up-to-date information. My colleagues and I have been working on um, how do we solve this problem with the healthcare information disparity? What do we do about it? And we have formed a company called Connect Well. It is a public-private partnership with the University of California at Berkeley School of Public Health. And using the School of Public Health's vast medical knowledge and library and Connect Well's technology on, on search and wellness platform, we have combined a way to bring the company and its information to the patient consumer. The, the product actually offers a health and wellness digital library where you can look up a number of different disease and, and, and medical information. The, the information is well written, short, concise, health literate so that you can understand with uh, very engaging photos. In addition, not to be forgotten, our wellness initiatives. We often assume that we know how to take care of ourselves, that everybody's learned this growing up, but we need to be remembering how to eat well, get proper nutrition, get proper exercise, get good quality sleep, manage our stress, and you know, take care of our, uh, our women when they're pregnant, make sure that they're getting the best prenatal care. And then finally is our healthy recipe collection. These actually come from the famous Berkeley Wellness Kitchen Cookbook, which uh, really emphasizes good uh, eating, whole foods, and then healthy preparation of meals. Together, this entire offering offers a guided learning experience for the patient consumer and can be a trusted place where to get your information from a reputable source. So the democratization of healthcare information is a powerful resource. It can actually help you engage with your patient, I mean, with your physician, offer you information so you can make better decisions uh, for yourself. It can empower you to become more active participant. I want to uh, finish telling you about uh, the patient that I started to tell you about at the, at the beginning. So as I mentioned, she stopped taking her antiretroviral therapy, thereby putting her young baby at risk. Just this week, she actually delivered her baby. It's healthy. Um, so far, it's HIV negative. It's going to need actually six months of testing to make sure that it remains negative. But I'm very hopeful, because we restarted the medication, that the baby will become uh, uh, and stay negative. So the point of all this is that where you get your health information matters, and how you interpret it and, or misinterpret it matters. So we need to choose wisely, choose trusted sources, and make the right decision. So thank you very much.